Greetings. My name is Brenda Vongova, President of the UN Movie Society of the United Nations Staff Recreation Council. We are proud to present the Real Compassion When Movies and the Missions Meet series, which is dedicated to advancing UN global causes through storytelling. Movies can possess the unique power to promote universal ideals, principles, and values so deeply enshrined in the United Nations including peace, development, respect for human rights, cultural appreciation, the dignity of the human person, and equal rights for all. Therefore, the UN Movie Society is committed to championing such efforts that promote the goals and values of the United Nations through the universal language of motion pictures. We hope that you'll enjoy the series, which will be broadcasted through the global channels of the United Nations. In this first episode, we are proud to present a conversation with Oscar-nominated director Christian Carrion on Driving Madeleine, a story about a seemingly simple taxi ride which evolves into a heartfelt meditation on the lives of Charles, a taxi driver in Paris, performed by Daley Boon, and his passenger Madeleine, performed by Lynn Renaud, an immaculately groomed 92-year-old woman whose warmth bellies her shocking past. The story reminds us that inside every seemingly benign elderly woman we might pass on the streets is a warrior, a nurturer, and a spirited adventurer. So let's drive straight into this exciting story. It's such a pleasure to meet with you. Thank you. And we're so honored to have a conversation with you. And Thank you so much for producing this powerful movie about called Driving Madeleine. Mm. And we at the UN Movie Society were really committed to champion the goals of the United Nations through the universal language of motion pictures. Movies truly possess the power to promote the universal ideas of the United Nations. And in your movie specifically, the theme of respect for the elderly, the elimination of violence against women, mm -hmm. and then honoring culture, and in this case, French culture, which is one of the official languages of the United Nations. So let's start with the first question. What initially sparked the idea of directing, producing this powerful movie? Well, <clears throat> in such a way, I, I, I fell in love with a script at uh, the beginning. So, um, for many reasons, I mean, all the reasons you told us, uh, the human reasons mm -hmm. about, yes, for all people, uh, the domestic violence, um, so, and Paris. <laughs> I wanted to shoot in Paris. I mean, Paris is uh, the third character in this movie, too. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, we start to, uh, to produce it. And um, to get the cast, I expect, I mean, Lino Reno, Danny Boone, and Alice Isaz, who is playing uh, the younger uh, Madeleine in this movie, yeah. It's beautiful, and thank you. My pleasure, my, it's my work to do the, the job, but also I wanted you to be moved by the story as I was yes. when I read the, the script at the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. it was so powerful, I was deeply moved. On the issue, on a very sensitive issue of violence against women, mm. globally, an estimated 736 million women in the world, which is almost one in three, have been subjected to physical and or sexual partner violence, non-partner sexual violence, at least once in their life. And wow. Thank you for drawing this really important issue to the to the world through through mm. storytelling, and it's something that is an issue that is always behind closed doors, and it's really impressive how beautifully your film balanced the moments of humor during the conversations between Madeleine and Charles and in contrast, the pathos of the issue of domestic violence. C'est là où ils vous ont jugé. Oui. 
Ray n'était pas mort. Ils m'ont quand même accusé de tentative d'homicide. Vous savez, dans les années 50, c'était pas comme aujourd'hui. Hein. Il fallait encore l'autorisation de son mari pour travailler. Il fallait l'autorisation du mari pour ouvrir un compte en banque. Enfin, Vous imaginez lui brûler les couilles. <rire> ouais. Ça faisait la une de tous les journaux. Was it challenging to strike this balance? It's always challenging to mix different emotions. I mean, to have a smile and then yes. to be um, shocked or to have a tear. Like in life, in some way. <clears throat> But um, to make the right balance, it's, it's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know uh, the number you told us about, uh, yeah. the number of women uh, involved in that crazy violence. But uh, I can tell you, because I'm very lucky to go all around the, the world with this movie. Yes. And everywhere, I mean, in China, Japan, Germany, everywhere, people wanted to talk about domestic violence. So yes, yes, it's something deep in a, in every on every continent. It's not a question of social level at all. Mm -hmm. I I can't explain exactly uh, why it does exist, but it it deeply exists, and it's a kind of taboo. Mm -hmm. It's uh, inside the families; they don't want to talk about it, and uh, it's very difficult so for the women to say. I have, I have a problem. This is uh, the most difficult thing I can imagine. Yes. Uh, and that's why uh, it's still a secret because they don't have um, the strength um, uh, to say how to talk. Exactly, and it takes tremendous courage to mm. raise your voice. Was it difficult for you to direct the intimate scenes of violence, the sensitive scenes? And what choices did you make when trying to cast the husband of the young Madeleine? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> violence, like sex, is always difficult to, to direct, to shoot, I can uh, because it's very intimate, it's very... So, um, we make a cast, with uh, Alice, we <clears throat> we met five different actors. Uh, we make some kind of repetition, not for violence, of course. And at the end, I said to Alice, "Well, now it's up to you. I need you to sh make a choice. Which one? If, with which one do you feel uh, good in confidence to play with?" So uh, she designed. She she wanted to play with Jeremy Lovett who played the husband, and uh, it was very difficult for him to do that because yes. he's really a nice guy and uh, very sweet. And, yeah. But in the end I said, yes, but I need you to, to do it, of course. Yeah. And so I tried to direct like like a dance, you know what I mean? It, yes. The movement, uh, like a kind of choreography exactly. to make them forget about a little bit yes. about uh, the subject itself, I mean violence, and uh, the most we can do it as a game, mm -hmm. the better it would be for them, for them to, to be in good situation to play it. And uh, so we didn't shoot many, many takes. I say congratulations to them because um, it was very uh, delicate. Exactly. Mm. And It was extremely thoughtful of you as a director to give Alice the the opportunity to choose yeah, the partner. Much, uh, she's the playing actor. with her so. soul, but with her body is not mine. On the issue of older persons and honoring the elderly. <coughs> Uh, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres once said, Older persons are invaluable sources of knowledge and experience and have much to contribute towards peace, sustainable development, and protecting our planet. So, Driving Madeleine has really been praised for its 
portrayal of aging and mortality. What message were you hoping to convey to the audience? And what, what did you intend to challenge the viewers' expectations of aging and senior citizens? Oh, Charles, je crois que vous allez encore rouspéter. Il faut qu'on s'arrête. Quoi, que si ça va pas Oui, oui. Une envie pressante. Ah. Et vous savez, à mon âge, ça, ça se gère pas trop bien, ça. Oui, oui, oui. Arrêtez-vous, voilà. Oui, ben là, je suis au milieu de la route, là. Je, je euh, à gauche, vite. là, pas Oui, 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 oui. Ça va ah, Vous avez pas mal, tu sais Les jambes, ça va ah, Ça va. Vite. Oui, oui, oui. Vite, 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 oui. Oh, no. My only um, hope is to touch you. And I remember the very first screening we met, we did in France, because everything starts in France, it's a French movie. I remember a young lady coming to me at the end and she said she was uh, crying and she said, I have to call my grandma. Mm -hmm. This is only the message for me. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I do believe we don't spend any enough time, some yeah. much of the time, with our parents or grandparents. Grandparents, because we are always busy. We are always well. This is um, the modern life, uh, you know. <clears throat> during the past, uh, most of the time, the generation were living together. Exactly. You know. Uh, now it's over because uh, because it's the modern life today. And but we, it was not easy to to live all together. Huh? Don't worry, it's, it was not a paradise. But the people, the connection was very easy. Now we lost something, for sure. And uh, most of the time, when you you lose your parents or grandparents, you always think about well, I should have spent more more time with them. Well, most of it, well, except when there is a conflict between the generation. But I mean, there is no message, like you said, you know, my, my work is not to give you a message. My work is to give you an emotion. When you are moved, you are ready to understand something maybe you will not be interested by. Et vous, est-ce que vous vous souvenez de la première fille que vous avez embrassée? Pardon? Votre premier baiser, celui qui compte pas seulement sur la bouche. Vous voyez ce que je veux dire Euh, non, je me souviens pas. Ben ça alors, c'est bien dommage pour vous. Vous savez quel âge Je vous ai dit le mien, vous pouvez bien me dire le vôtre. 46. La moitié du mien. Vous pourriez être mon petit-fils. Vous savez ce que mon père me disait toujours Chaque colère est à coup de vieux, chaque sourire est à coup de jeune. Alors voilà, si vous voulez rester jeune, vous savez ce qu'il vous reste à faire. The emotion is the best way for you to, to make you think about something. Exactly. An emotion can be positive or negative. Oh yeah. Um, for sure. Both are powerful. So... <clears throat> I think we need to listen to the old generation. They knew, they know some things we don't. Uh, so the idea of a transmission is very important for me. I made a lot of mo several movies about this, you know, the, the heritage of the previous exactly. generation, and uh, because um, it's not easy to get it, and we can lose many many things. I do, I do believe. Ça vous ennuie si je prends votre bras Ah non, avec plaisir. Merci. Voilà, on y va. C'est beau. Ça fait longtemps que j'ai pas marché au bras d'un homme. Ah bon Ah bah, ben, ça me touche. C'est une belle soirée quand même. Très. Très mal. Ça fait du bien. Paris truly plays a vital role in this film, and you 
truly do a beautiful job of showing the gorgeous backdrop of Paris and we the viewers have the opportunity to take a tour throughout all of the landmarks of Paris. How did you use the city to complement and enhance the storyline or themes or characters of this film? I'm not living in Paris. Uh, I'm living in Lyon, a very beautiful city of the stars where cinema was invented. But I love Paris uh, by night and I hate by day because it's a crazy, it's really a nightmare to drive into and, Paris. And I can imagine to shoot. <laughs> To and to film. shoot, so that's why, okay, as nice. you know, we decided not to shoot really. Uh, we were in a studio with a car and big screens around the car on which we screen what we wanted from Paris. So we spent a lot of time, a lot of time before in Paris, driving and everywhere, uh, and to shoot everything we could under the sun, under the rain, by day, by night. And then we make a huge editing of our best of from Paris. For you to understand the traffic jam of <laughs> Paris, but also uh, the beauty, the beauty of monuments, the beauty of uh, the river, I mean, the, the Seine, the beauty of, um, the, I mean, the kind of perfume of Paris. And uh, because she, I mean, Madeleine, she wanted to, to connect for the very last time for her with Paris one more, one more time. And uh, for the driver, it's not the same feeling about Paris. And this contrast it was uh, very interesting for me uh, to direct. It was, it was beautiful the way you directed. And I would have never imagined that it was just shot in the studio. I hope so. <laughs> My, as it's, I told you, and, uh, cinema, we are all liars in cinema, but for good reasons. You're, no, magicians. <laughs> magicians, maybe. <Magicians. maybe. laughs> yeah, it's a uh, kind of, you know, a fantasy. Yes. Yeah. And I can imagine you really were so thoughtful because also this made it very comfortable for the actor, yeah. the actress. Oh yeah, this is what because was the point was because she was ninety. Yeah, she was ninety-two. Yes. When we shot the movie, so I said no, I don't want to lose <laughs> by Marilyn Renault exactly. by shooting really in Paris. Exactly. So she was fine, she was happy, she was fresh, and she was like she is in the movie, you can see her. And in conclusion, what message or emotion do you hope the audience will take away? I hope they will be moved. Yes. And think about, yes, um, <clears throat> the previous generation, their parents, their grandparents, um, and also, about the domestic violence, um, I remember I was in Beijing in China. There was a screening, and at the end of the screening, some people came to me. They were crying, and they said, um, "We have a problem in our family, a domestic violence too." And now, watching this movie, I said, "No, it's enough. We have to talk about this. Uh, it can't be a taboo anymore now." And I said, wow, um, good luck. And uh, if a movie can open a small gate uh, of that kind, that, that type, type of reaction, I would love so. Yes. But uh, I, we have to be modest for cinema. We just offer some emotion, and then after the people in their real life <laughs> try to do or not something. You produced and directed this powerful film that really, really will move your audience. And, and thank you so much for, for telling the story. And thank you so much for your time.
Thanks, my pleasure to talk about all of this. And thank you for all your questions.